This video will demonstrate how to design a composite steel beam that is unshored during construction and visual analysis using the unshored approximate construction type. Let's get started. To effectively use visual analysis to design composite beam members, only the steel members should be modeled. The stiffness from the concrete slab or from the member offset should not be included in the model as these will be automatically accounted for in the design checks. For the unshored approximate construction type, the pre-composite strength and deflection demands are automatically calculated and checked in visual analysis. For these checks, the beam is assumed to have a simple span and is assumed to be loaded uniformly by the self-weight of the beam, the weight of the concrete deck, and the weight of the permanent metal deck form. If these assumptions are violated, we would have to design the beam using the unshored defined loads construction type which is explained in another training video. In this example, we will look at a simply supported beam that is 36 feet long. The W21 by 50 beam has already been drawn with the pin roller boundary conditions. In the dead load case, a uniform load has been applied that includes the self weight of the steel beam, the concrete deck, and the metal deck form, in addition to the other dead loads on the system. A uniform load has also been applied in the live load case. Note if the beam was not simply supported or if the pre-composite load included a point load from say another beam, the unshored approximate construction type should not be used. With the member created and the loads applied, we will now set up the load combinations in the load case manager. For strength design, we will select the ASCE 716 LRFD load combinations we will also select the deflection checks. Switching to the result view, we can see the analysis results for the various load combinations. The deflection for the dead load case shown in the result view was computed using the total dead load and the moment of inertia for the non-composite beam. To determine the composite deflections, visual analysis automatically subtracts out the pre-composite deflections and then scales the result by the ratio of the beam's moment of inertia to the lower bound moment of inertia to account for the composite stiffness of the beam and slab system. The total deflections are calculated by adding the pre-composite deflections to the composite deflections. Note, in the result view, visual analysis does not know that the beam is composite since the composite parameter is not defined until we are in the design view. Therefore, the deflections in the result view are not adjusted to account for the composite action. The deflections that account for the composite action are only visible in the design view and the design report. Switching to the design view, we will select the beam and mark it as composite. This causes additional sections in the modify tab to appear so that the parameters for the concrete slab, the deck, and the anchors can be specified. First, we will set the construction type to unshored approximate. With this construction type chosen, the bracing pre-composite section appears so that we can specify how the beam is braced during construction. For our case, we will assume that the metal deck form continuously braces the top flange of the beam during construction and we will assume the bottom flange is unbraced. Next, we will specify the deflection limits using the default member span ratios. Moving on to the concrete slab parameters, we will use a 7.5 inch thick slab and assume the beams are spaced at 10 feet or 120 inches on center. For the deck type, we will have ribs that are perpendicular to the span of the beam. The deck parameters can be entered manually or a deck profile can be chosen from the database. We will choose a 3 VLI 19 gauge deck. Finally, let's define the steel anchors to connect the slab to the beam. Either channels or studs can be used for the anchors. We will use 3 quarter inch diameter headed studs with a strength of 65 ksi. The studs will be 4.5 inches long and be spaced at least 2 inches from the web of the steel deck. We will start out with one row of studs on the beam. In visual analysis, the member can be divided into multiple equal length regions and the stud spacing can be set for each region of the beam. For our example, we will just have one region and we will specify a 12 inch stud spacing. Clicking OK, we now look at the beam and see that the unity is less than one, which means that the beam has passed. Had the beam failed, we could adjust the beam section, the slab, 
the deck or the anchor parameters to increase the stiffness and strength of the system. Double clicking on the member produces a report for the member. In this report, we see a summary of the parameters that we specified for the concrete slab, the deck, and the anchors. We also see that the strong deflection check and the composite beam check both have a maximum unity value of less than 1. For the deflection check, the dead load plus live load case has the maximum unity value. This means that the total deflection case controls over the pre-composite construction deflection case. In the details column, we see the permanent pre-composite deflection, which is calculated based on the previously mentioned assumption for the unshored approximate construction type, in addition to the composite deflections. The sum of the two equals the total deflection demand. For the composite beam check, the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live load case has the maximum unity value. This means the composite case controls over the pre-composite case. In the details column, we see that only partial composite behavior is achieved at this particular offset. Notice that the maximum unity value does not occur at the center of the beam where there is the largest moment demand. If we look at a graph of the demand versus capacity, we see that the capacity increases as more suds are used for the capacity calculation. Since the capacity and the demand are not constant, the maximum unity can occur at a location other than the center of the beam. In addition to checking the composite beam capacity, visual analysis also checks the capacity of the pre-composite beam for the construction loading. Had we not counted on the metal deck form to brace the top flange of the beam during construction, we see that the capacity of the unshored non-composite beam controls for the pre-composite loading. For this case, the code reference indicates that the beam fails due to lateral torsional buckling as expected. In just a few minutes, we have used visual analysis to design a composite beam that was unshored during construction. Using the unshored approximate construction type, visual analysis was able to check the pre-composite strength and deflection demand for the simply supported beam with the uniform construction dead load. Check out the other training videos to learn how to design beams that are shored during construction or for an overview of composite beam design and visual analysis. Thanks for watching and have a great day.